Hey, what's up? I'm Adrian from ProductionCrate.com, and today I am going to go over how I was able to pull off this cool underwater room, underwater base type effect here. We'll start with this underwater exterior shot. If you want a super long and detailed tutorial about how to get this sort of look, I recommend checking out my biological action movie dad's video on the Red Giant channel. To give ourselves a head start on this underwater look, we want two things, fog and caustics, which I decided to capture in camera. Caustics could have easily been done in After Effects, but in camera is going to be a lot more realistic because all of the 3D mapping and the shadows are gonna be taken care of for us. I had to capture the caustics and the fog separately, but why? Because the fog adds some like thickness to the air and it gives our lights some volumetrics, making them behave more like they would if we were underwater, which is great, and that's why we do it, but this would immediately give away the fact that our caustics aren't coming from above, but rather from a projector, and it would ruin the illusion. Let's make these caustics in After Effects, or just download from Footage Create, it's fine too. We make a new solid with a fractal noise and animate the evolution. I set a keyframe at the beginning at zero revolutions and one at the end for 20 revolutions, and then I hit cycle evolution and told it to loop every 20 revolutions. This means I now have some looping noise. Next, a black solid and a soft round mask give me some soft edges. Eventually, we're gonna get rid of these edges altogether, but for now, we just wanna soften up those corners to get less of a rectangular shape. Add an adjustment layer with a vector blur effect turned all the way up. You can even drop a curves under that to make adjustments. Next, another black solid with a feathered rectangular mask just to make sure that there's no hard edges. And then a final adjustment layer with some curves to turn this guy blue. I loaded this up onto my laptop and I hooked it up to a projector. You've gotta play it in QuickTime Player because QuickTime lets you play videos on a loop and this is a loopable video. And we can also just go full screen with that. I shot those caustics at the walls and at the floor with no other lights on in the room. I couldn't get it to be 100% dark, but I did try my best. This projector isn't anywhere near powerful enough to get the whole room at once and still be able to see the caustics. So I shot several passes with the projector in different locations locations. In After Effects, I can easily combine all these together using a light and transfer mode. After that, I was very careful not to move anything in the room or touch the camera. All I did was change the lighting and set up the fog machine, and I let that fog machine run for a while. Okay, so at this point, it's so foggy that I actually can't even really see. Uh, hopefully, I can get to the camera without knocking anything over. Hopefully that's enough fog. Seriously, this room got foggier than my glasses when I'm wearing a face mask. <laughs> The flickering light in the office is just a natural thing that happens for some reason, incorrect wiring or something. We have a dimmer switch, but instead of dimming the lights, it just shifts them into party mode. Business mode, party mode. Business mode, party mode. Business mode, party mode. I don't think it's supposed to do that, but it does, so I decided to use it to my advantage. We can combine the caustics pass and the foggy pass together with a screen transfer mode. This looks great. The foggy footage looks a little bit blurry because all the details are covered up with the fog, so the caustics pass, which is not foggy, helps bring back some of that detail and sharpen the whole thing up. On another copy of the caustics layer, we add a levels to make it super contrasty and ugly, and then add a CC radial blur set to fading zoom and then turn the value into the negative, deep into the negatives, to get some fake volumetric lighting. But instead of looking like they're coming from a projector, they're gonna look like they're coming from above. I decided to record some extra caustics from inside the office. You can see me in there, but I kinda look like a spooky ghost because of the strong reflection on the window. These ones I keyframed to flicker along with the lights inside the office, and I color corrected them to be a bit more yellow, of course. I needed to get some seaweed on the ground, so 
I grabbed this plant off of graphics crate. Does it look like seaweed? It's close enough, I guess. I animated it to sway with the puppet tool. Now I could spread those across the ground using particular, which is super easy, but I'm gonna go another route. So here's a different way you could do that. I used the pan behind tool to move the anchor point to the bottom of the plant, and I made this a 3D layer. I'm gonna separate the layer's position properties into the different dimensions and apply a bunch of expressions that are all gonna rely on the layer's index. Uh, that is to say where the layer appears in the layer stack. On the X position, I type index times 30. This means each layer is gonna move 30 pixels to the right as I duplicate the layer. On the Z position, I type wiggle 0, 1500. Since the first number is zero, this layer isn't actually gonna wiggle, but the wiggle expression uses the layer's index as a random seed. So this will make each copy move back or forth by a value of up to 1500 pixels. On the scale, I type W equals wiggle zero comma 100 parentheses to close the line. Uh, this is just me setting up a variable, which is called W. And then under that, I type open bracket W brackets zero comma W brackets zero comma W brackets zero. So now the scale is gonna wiggle with each layer, but the X, Y, and Z scale values will all be the same as each other. So I don't get weird stretching. Lastly, on the Z rotation, I type wiggle open parentheses zero comma five to give us a bit of variation there. Now here's the cool part. I can grab that layer and I can duplicate it about a hundred times. This is gonna give me a whole field of plants all moving at the same time. And the order of my layers in the layer stack is gonna be organized perfectly. Now I can just temporarily shorten all of them to one frame, uh, highlight them, right click and select keyframe assistant sequence layers. Now I'll move those back into position and all of my layers are now offset by one frame. And the result is that I get a field of plants that all look like they're reacting to the ambient turbulence of the water. Pretty neat, huh? Since there are already 3D layers, I can set up some After Effects lights to match my real life lights. For some final touches, we could add in some bubbles or some fish. You could put an adjustment layer over top of everything with a turbulent displace, but keep it subtle. Seriously, probably don't go past one on the amount. You can turn up the size pretty high though, and then animate the offset to get those nice waves. For the interior shot, I did some quick roto. Fortunately, I'm not a very good actor, so this came in handy because instead of moving around or, you know, conveying emotion, I'm mostly just standing still. Bad acting but easy roto. For the background, I used one of the looping underwater backgrounds from Footage Crate, but I used a levels effect to get it more into the blue range that I'm using for this piece. Uh, I threw on some bubble streams as well. I actually managed to preserve some of the reflections in the window since the room behind it was so dark. If I had actually planned on doing this, which I didn't, it was just a happy accident, I could have set up some black cloth behind the window so that I could have done it even better. I used a levels to choke out the dark colors in the background and then I drew a soft mask to get rid of the parts that didn't work and then I just put that layer on a screen mode with a lower opacity. Uh, this layer still has some wall and some Adrian in it but those parts are covered up by the roto so who cares you know. The shark is a rigged model from render crate. I animated it by keyframing the bones in the mouth but the body bones are animated just using noise modifiers and I decided to render this out in element 3d which is probably less realistic but I feel like it gives me more control especially considering my current skill level. For the environment and element, I just picked out one that was super blue, and then I also scaled the shark out a bit to make it a bit wider so it looks more like a megalodon and less like a great white. I made a separate layer with some heavy fog, and I used that as a luma mat for the shark so that it would disappear into the depths when it was far away. The nose sticking through the wall is also a separate layer. I just used the camera far plane control to cut off the shark just behind the teeth. I also animated animated some lights using an expression, which is covered in our automatic lightning video. I don't have this expression memorized or anything. I literally went back to that video and I watched it to refresh myself on the expression, how it works, and I also copied it from the description. But this is great because the lighting on the shark now matches the lighting on the Adrian. The cracked glass texture is from Graphics Crate. I turned down the exposure and I added a blue tritone so that it could match the background. And 
I also duplicated it and I made the duplicate a 3D layer such a screen so that it would catch highlights from the real lights that are going off in my scene. For the breaking glass, I used some 4K glass shattering effects from Footage Crate, but I sped them up. Also some 4K dust aerial hits. I remember making these dust effects. We used a slingshot. It was good times. Chris and Nico, I miss you dudes. Mostly Nico. I figured that if the glass was broken, there should be some water spraying through it, but I didn't have any water spraying effects, so I went and I made some. I picked up a fun water gun toy. It's not really a gun, it's more of a tube. It also lights up for some reason. It shoots a pretty straight blast of water, so I made a modification to make it more turbulent. I hot glued two screws to the front of it, and I put a third screw right in the middle. This one isn't glued in, so I can move it up and down by twisting it. It's a screw, you know? The idea is that I can adjust it in between takes so that I can get different amounts of turbulence in the water blasts. So then I went outside, and I collected a dramatic slow motion bucket of water, and I got to work. Guys, I swear to you, Every time we shoot something outside, it's always on the hottest, humidest, most disgusting days. It's really horrible. Separating the water from the background is not that hard. It's the exact same process that we use for fire, which I explain in detail in our fire VFX video. For compositing water, dust, fog, rain, anything like that, I use this method. I put all of the effects in a pre-comp and I take a copy of the footage and I blur it and I hit the preserve underlying transparency switch or the putts switch. And then back in the main comp, I can brighten that up if I want or I can use a transfer mode or whatever, but this makes it so that my dust and my water and my broken glass all respond to the crazy lighting that's actually going on in the scene. If you want to see a full video about this method, I have one. It's a few years old, but it's still good. I actually double checked it just to make sure. And that's it for today. I have been Adrian Jensen. I hope you enjoyed it and make sure that you are nice and subscribed to see more tutorials like this on the future. I'm actually working on another one about this shot right here, so be ready for that. All right, thanks for watching, make it awesome, and goodbye.